uh, the importance they uh, deserve. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'd like to thank uh, all the participants and I would like to give the floor to Professor Borelli. Gurieri. Gurieri. Predictive Genetics, che parlerà sulla genetica predittiva. Grazie, buongiorno a tutti. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm uh, very honored to be here today. I would like to thank Professor Giuliani for the invitation. And um, I am really uh, struck from the title which has uh, been given to my uh, presentation, uh, genetic, um, predictive um, genetics. I've seen the program and um, I've seen the agenda, you will uh, read several aspects of um, basic science applied to human life. Uh, as a genetist, I have decided to deal with uh, the topic of um, predictive genetics from uh, the point of view of the impact uh, which basic science uh, has on uh, the life of patients, uh, and uh, not ne necessarily on uh, the life of patients, uh, but uh, on the life of healthy um, individuals uh, who could compared to other individuals uh, can uh, have a special predisposition to specific um, diseases and um, I would like to see up to, um, uh, to, up to what point genetics uh, can um, have a predictive role for, um, for good. So everything started in um, 2000 and probably um, before 2000 when uh, the decoding of the human genome at least um, on uh, its um, sequence made us believe um, that um, probably um, reading this book uh, would have been uh, um, useful and enough uh, to have a kind of um, personal profile contained um, in, um, in identity card uh, with a barcode, a real uh, genetic identity card which um, could um, explain any symptom, any aspect of uh, what we are in um, health and disease. Actually, we know that uh, in order to predict some aspects, we do not need genetics. Be why? Because sometimes um, it is just enough to look at our parents uh, to predict um, what uh, could happen to us. So this is um, a, simple, um, a simple thing. In health and disease, we are the unpredictable result of uh, the interaction between genome and um, environment. And this interaction is not so easy. Maybe you had the opportunity to observe uh, those wonderful videos which uh, make us understand that between genetics and the environment uh, there is a whole world and partially you will um, uh, see it today and someone has already written that uh, genes are probability rather than likelihood rather than a destiny. Uh, so um, there is uh, the interaction between gene and uh, environment which is mediated by a set of molecular mechanisms which are not genetics and uh, one of the most uh, studied one is um, epigenetics. I have um, decided to, um, to do an outline on uh, predictive genetics today at which um, stage of life genetics can be predictive? Well, at every stage. Why? What for? Is it important? Um, how important it is? So the contact with um, patients makes us understand that um, patients um, 
do not always want to know that they have um, a specific predisposition to specific um, diseases and so let's start with the different uh, stages so um, since the beginning in our embryo life um, pre-implantation life fetal life in um, uh, childhood and uh, in adulthood we have uh, the possibility to apply predictive aspects of genetics. How? Both in um, persons who are at risk because of their family history or because uh, they had um, previous um, reproductive um, aspects or they are symptomatic but also in adulthood and uh, today we know that there is uh, a big um, part of the medical science which um, focuses on uh, the preconceptional aspect which uh, would be the best time to prevent and um, in all these uh, stages uh, genetics uh, can uh, play a predictive role if a person already has a disease is it useful to know what can happen to that person? Well, yes, it is useful because um, identifying uh, some genetic aspects in a patient can be useful for the prognosis. Um, several times when parents receive a diagnosis of a very complex disease in their children, they they ask what will be the life of my child will my child talk and walk will my child have a degeneration so this it is very important to have this information at an early stage so um, can genetic tests predict uh, the response to a treatment uh, yes it can it can predict uh, side effects of a treatment and uh, it can be important for the um, not affected members of the same family to know their um, potential uh, status of carrier or person at risk of developing a disease in the future this is an example here you can uh, see a few children this is a very young um, child who has um, a compromised uh, situation. She's uh, a child who doesn't speak. She's um, a child who um, has an important uh, delay and um, she has uh, an excess of um, growth. So the um, diagnosis of uh, a special gene and um, being able to give a name and last name uh, to her condition which is uh, the Marshall Smith uh, condition doesn't only mean that um, it is uh, a pure academic exercise it, uh, um, we have to explain parents uh, what is going to happen what will be the natural uh, history of the life of this child what they can expect and what is useless to do because uh, doing useless things uh, generate frustrations and um, most of all it is important to have an idea of their risk uh, for um, potential um, pregnancy. Also in this case uh, these three images uh, refer to a woman who is apparently health and has developed uh, um, uh, bone problems, especially this aspect of uh, the bone. She had uh, very, spe very specific symptoms, um, pains uh, which could not be treated, uh, um, pains uh, which were resistant uh, to any any treatments, um, and so the diagnosis of uh, the Bushke and of Endocarf syndrome um, um, made it possible to identify a genetic mutation and so to um, have understand uh, that the problem was uh, hypercalcemia and so it was uh, a kind of uh, hyperfunctioning of um, parathyroids and uh, most of all this um, diagnosis um, allowed um, allowed physicians uh, to avoid uh, useless uh, useless um, exams. This um, woman is a woman who has normal intelligence. Uh, 
a, a genetic test was applied and so it was possible to identify her genetic um, defect, uh, the mutation of a gene which is called TWIST and which allows us to make um, a diagnose, diagnosis um, with special syndrome. This woman wants to have children and so this uh, test allowed us to predict um, a risk, a 50% risk um, for a um, child and allows us to have the possibility to receive this information during um, pregnancy. Of course, uh, there are some um, ethical issues in uh, predictive um, genetics. Genetic tests represent uh, represent quite um, have several ethical implications. Some data are um, super sensitive. So what, um, what, what does um, it mean uh, that there are ethical issues? Well, in prenatal phase, we define the risk for a fetus or a child was not asked for that um, assertment and so it allows parents uh, to make choices based on um, their desires and uh, in um, a small child when we make a diagnosis and afterwards I will uh, give you a few examples well sometimes we put a very heavy burden of uh, what the child uh, could have um, when the child grows up and uh, finally providing information to an adult on the reproductive risk and so um, we go back to the preconceptional phase uh, well this is becoming an emerging issue and um, it could have some limits. This is um, a couple of uh, parents. Um, I have several parents uh, um, who come to me and um, they, uh, they lose their children because of uh, malignant osteopetrosis. Uh, there is no DNA of the child. We do not know what, they, what to do. They um, so they have the same uh, type of blood and so um, the risk is very high, so 25% risk. So what can we do? This um, couple reached uh, the sixth month of pregnancy after the loss of uh, this child and um, we were able to analyze in um, the two parents all the genes known at that time uh, responsible for this condition and um, we were lucky because we we found out uh, that they were carriers of the same genetic mutation in the same gene. We were able to um, see that the mutation is pathogenetic mutation, but unfortunately also the next child was uh, um, was affected by the disease, but it was important to do that because the child was uh, underwent uh, the diagnosis at birth, and so early diagnosis is fundamental for these children because they are soon uh, they soon receive um, bone marrow transplant, and so they can have a better prognosis. Another problem concerning uh, healthy carriers uh, concern the mothers of uh, um, ex um, fragile children who always um, inherit um, uh, their mutation from a healthy mother and um, for women this becomes uh, a huge a huge burden uh, for the mothers but also for sisters. The mothers of uh, these um, children who already have um, children um, want to know if their daughters are healthy carriers but uh, we have to wait for um, we have to wait for 18 years of age before performing the genetic test. A whole world um, is uh, being developed on predictive genetics because there are some um, packages which are offered also um, prenatal diagnosis but also packages for um, parents 
thanks to which we can um, check the status of healthy carriers for the most common diseases but of course this is not enough because we all have several variants uh, that um, we are uh, healthy carriers of and so we cannot uh, identify all of them this is a risk, uh, another risk especially the couples who start a, an assisted um, an assisted um, progression so they um, want to have a success, successful um, pregnancy with a healthy child but today this is not uh, possible because today we do not have the tools to, to do that. Also the pre-implantation uh, this is um, dedicated only to um, very serious conditions and so it is based on um, assisted uh, progression uh, with um, in vitro fertilization so there is the analysis on individual cells from the different embryos and uh, all those who inherited the um, disease in the family do not receive the implantation. There is also the possibility to, um, to do a predictive test in um, a prenatal um, diagnosis. Today the field of predictive, non-invasive predictive um, genetics is uh, well developed. It concerns uh, um, couples at specific risk um, of some uh, diseases and also those who have a risk uh, similar to that of the general population for congenital diseases it is um, uh, this risk is equal to 5% more or less this is just an image um, to remind you um, that uh, the non-invasive prenatal prediction um, risks an acceleration of uh, times and so it risks to overcome all the possibilities offered by technology. Today new tests are, going, are being developed on uh, conditions uh, which as of now are not so easy to diagnose with uh, a non-invasive um, test of course because of the presence of uh, maternal DNA together with the fetal DNA. For example, this uh, woman uh, is um, a woman at a specific risk. She's a woman, an intelligent woman, was um, a <coughs> polycystic kidney. She has um, a peculiar aspect of uh, face um, and uh, hands. She had um, already a daughter when she came to us. This is her daughter, who has uh, the same condition as the mother which uh, is um, type 1 digital orofacial condition and um, the confirmation of the condition through the genetic test has allowed this woman to have um, to have access to the prenatal prediction during her pregnancy and uh, luckily a healthy boy a healthy um, boy was uh, was born so this is another aspect of uh, the condition and uh, in uh, healthy um, children <clears throat> when we do uh, when we um, talk to adult uh, people who already have children and who have developed uh, late onset uh, conditions and monogenic conditions uh, such as uh, myotonic dystrophia and Huntington disease, <coughs> this couple ask um, for a test in uh, the healthy child unless uh, there are um, symptoms and this is the example of um, myotonic dystrophy which in uh, some cases can uh, show symptoms in uh, neonatal age uh, there is a congenital form but uh, usually it, uh, it has a late onset 
uh, well, in um, these cases, we do not uh, offer um, diag the diagnosis um, in um, uh, the childhood unless uh, there are symptoms. Um, what is uh, the purpose of uh, early diagnosis uh, when uh, there is no therapy? Or um, what is the purpose of a pre-symptomatic diagnosis? Well, it is useful for prevention. Um, this is a child with uh, a uh, mild um, uh, with um, hypotonia, speech delay, mild development delay. This is um, a very clear example of how genetics can uh, predict uh, what uh, is going to ha happen. This um, child um, um, didn't have a uh, gestalt and so it was not possible to have uh, to do a clinical uh, diagnosis and so he underwent a pangenomic uh, test uh, which showed uh, uh, a small um, deletion, but the more important, most important thing is that in the deletion, uh, this gene was uh, contained, the STK11 gene, which is the gene responsible for the Poitz-Jäger syndrome, which is um, an intestinal polyposis uh, with um, a, a very high predisposition to cancer, both in uh, testicles and pancreas and um, uh, bowel cancer. And so this changed uh, the life of this uh, child completely and also the life of his parents because uh, the child uh, entered um, a surveillance um, program which based on the guidelines um, uh, establishes uh, that um, under this condition uh, he must start from uh, Eight years of age. Surely, without a genetic test, nobody would have required a coloscopy for this child for no reason. So, when moving on to adults, when is it useful to carry out this predictive test? Let us think about neurodegeneration and uh, Huntington's disease. Uh, and Huntington's disease, we know that uh, it uh, appears later on during the life of a person and when the triplets are over 300. And we know that there can also, sorry, over 100. And there are also some pediatric cases, but they're very rare. And uh, once again, there's no testing before 18 years of age. But things are changing, meaning that if it is possible to have a therapeutic uh, action very early on that can improve or delay the onset of the disease, then it makes sense to carry out predictive genetic test. It is now the case uh, uh, of some uh, pathologies such as the Huntington's disease uh, because as you can see uh, and speaking about very high level uh, interferences but some therapies are being tested and it is now possible to block the uh, the mute, mutated uh, RNA with an excess of a uh, tribe of a high herpins. There's a reduction between 40 and 60 percent of the mutated protein in these uh, patients that are treated with the interfering RNA. Then there's another important aspect related to predictive medicine. It concerns cancer. I will not get into detail here regarding the various conditions. There are numerous conditions. There are more and more conditions. Now there are multi-gene panels that allow us to study the people that have developed a cancer. 
and we can immediately identify the gene that in a certain family determines the predisposition. As said earlier, earlier uh, genes are uh, a likability, not a certainty. So we know that if one person has a certain gene, he's more likely to develop a colon cancer in this case, but it is not a certainty anyway. Once again, no testing here before 18 years of age. There are some uh, predisposition disease, uh, diseases that can also be that can also be pediatric cancers. So it makes sense to carry out a test also for healthy children. And speaking about P10 or P53 mutations. Uh, why is it useful to carry out such tests? It is useful for surveillance reasons, especially for families with a predisposition to cancer. And these kind of families have to start the screening much earlier than other families or for CA positive families. Sorry, BRCA positive families. I think it is important to look at the phenotype of the patient. This is a woman who had breast cancer when she was 35, and clearly she immediately had the BRCA1-2 test without the intervention of a genetist doctor. The result of the test was normal, so there was nothing else to add. Then clearly we could see these very peculiar lesions and so we could see that her uh, head uh, circumference was particularly uh, uh, high so we identified the mutation through the, the BRCA test and we extended the test to all her family. This woman had breast cancer when she was 35. Her mother had a had colon cancer when she was 35 as well. And here there's a family that uh, had neoplasias very early on also. And here there's a whole branch of the family that is likely to have a cancer and that could have the predictive test. Is it important for therapy to have a predictive diagnosis? Yes, it is. In some cases, when there is a therapy available, this is a slide that Dr. Tiziano borrowed from Professor Montoni and he gave it to me. You know that a musc spinal muscular atrophy is a terrible, very serious disease, especially in the type 1 and type 2 uh, type uh, forms that are very um, that have a very early onset. For type 1, uh, children cannot sit down and they uh, die very early on. And then there's the type 2 that uh, uh, impedes people to walk. And then there's type 3 that has a, a late onset. Uh, it used to be impossible to treat it. And all parents that had a child with spinal muscular atrophy would uh, choose other kinds of uh, uh, treatments uh, without the use of embryos and uh, but, but now uh, it is possible now to have a therapy that uh, has been recently published on the New England Journal of Medicine with an intratacral injection of antisense RNA that allows to uh, identify the less active copy of the gene. I will not get into detail here because it is very complex, but the important thing here to bear in mind is that uh, you can see here a dark spot, and that shows uh, that those who did not have negative events such as uh, pneumonia pneumonia and other similar uh, events are those that started very early on their therapy. So it is becoming more and more important because these children are healthy. 
now the, the and in this case it makes sense to predict whether a condition of this kind uh, might occur at least in the Lazio region there will be uh, prenatal screening for mutations of four children that have SMA in order to start very early on this kind of treatment. Clearly, it is very important. Uh, well, while uh, science uh, uh, makes these leaps forward, it is very important to, uh, to, 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 to to, to value personal feelings too. So to conclude, I translated into English uh, a sentence by Lucius Anio Seneca who said that memory of a bad past recalls the fear of it. Prediction of a bad future as it might happen with a genetic a predictive test might anticipate such fear while nobody gets unhappy for present only of course if uh, if, if people are healthy